Hey guys, what is up? Dave here, coming back to you with a new video on the channel. I know I'm very sporadic on my uploads. I apologize for that. Some of you guys are requesting an upload schedule. It's hard. Especially when you don't take YouTube seriously because there's no point in it in 2020. I meant to remove the names. <laughs> I ain't re-recording this. Anyway, uh... Wow, did I just peak like hell? Holy crap. Let's lower that to three. Anyway, I'm here today because I wanted to m release a little bit of a rant. Um, I recently bought a new phone. First time I've bought a phone outright ever. Um, I actually bought two new phones. And I'm fairly upset about both. Mostly just because... I, I I thought buying so a little history. Um I enjoy Android modding as much as the next person. I really do. It's a lot of fun. I've always enjoyed it. I think that the customization of Android is fantastic, but here in the USA, we really get the short end of the stick. We really do. Um the models overseas or like international phone models um basically any manufacturer you can unlock the bootloader and do whatever you want with the phone here in the usa no you're not allowed not at all not even supported uh some motorola phones you can do it with here in the U uh, usa i have a software Oh my god, it just moved, and my fart hit my nose. Um, I have a software issue with one of my old phones that keeps me from using the phone. And because I can't unlock the bootloader, I cannot repair the phone. I would have to have root access to repair the phone. I have tried flashing uh, firmware, but because the firmware that is on the device is the same as the latest firmware version that I can download online and flash using Fastboot. Since the numbers match, it doesn't let me flash it. If I could unlock the bootloader and do Fastboot unlock flashing, I would be able to repair the device in a matter of half an hour and use it again. <sighs> Which is one of the reasons why I had to buy a new phone. The other reason is my phone that I had was a Samsung A10e, which was also locked to shit. Um, what I mean by that is ever since the Galaxy S8 for the U.S. models, you've either needed to hope for an exploit or you've needed to, um, okay, there we go. There was a bunch of buzzing in my ear that I could hear. So you basically either needed to hope for an exploit, trick the system, or you're just shit out of luck as far as the Samsung phones because they have removed OEM unlock from the... Android operating system entirely, pretty much. On the like S8 and some international versions of newer phones, um, even the international Samsung phones, you kind of have to do a little trick where you set the date back two weeks on your phone, um, restart the phone, turn off automatic updates, restart the phone again, and then OEM unlock appears in your developer settings. United States phones, since the Note 10, I believe, it's just gone, and you have to hope for an exploit. So, although the Samsung hacking community is gigantic, um, it really doesn't seem to help anything in the long run. And I hate it, because that's the reason I stick to Android, is... I enjoy running Lineage OS on my phone. I enjoy running, um, you know, Oxygen OS on a phone that doesn't get supported by Oxygen OS. My favorite ROM ever was Resurrection Remix for Android. That's my favorite ROM of all time. To this day, I have a Galaxy S5 I use for just music. And it's running Remix OS because it's the best battery life. I have a battery case on the phone that takes the battery up to like a 3,000 or 6,000 milliamp hour total battery life. And that phone is great for just music, but I can't use it anymore. 
uh, because there's just something wrong with it and it can't get phone calls. And that was the same problem I had with my A10e. If my screen was off, it was like do not disturb was turned on. No matter what I did, I even reset the phone to factory settings. If the screen is turned off, I can't get phone calls. If my phone was on Wi-Fi, I couldn't get phone calls. It would send people straight to voicemail or it would tell them the number was non-existent. I've had the same phone number since, oh God, high school, um, 2007 when I got my first flip phone. I've had the same phone number and my idiot ass almost just spoke it out. <laughs> uh, but recently I got these two new phones and I read online that the unlocked versions of, and this proved I need to do better research, um, the unlocked version of the Samsung A51 can be bootloader unlocked. And I checked XDA, can be bootloader unlocked. What I didn't have access to at the time of making my purchase was the actual model number of the phone that I was buying. It was the SMA515U1, I want to say. The United States version of the unlocked phone cannot unlock the bootloader. The Motorola brand phones, you have to go through their customer support and get the bootloader unlocked, but most of the time you have to wait until the phone is like six months old or they won't do it. Um, and even then, that's only on newer phones. So like the Z2, the Moto Z2, I believe you can do it. But again, you have to wait for the phone to be activated for like six months or something stupid like that. Um, there's other phones too. Uh, LG phones, just terrible support overall and the phone that I'm using is my daily driver now I am very much enjoying it I went obscure because I thought if I went obscure and I even did some research I thought if I went obscure with something brand new on the market that was my first mistake it would end up being um a great idea and I'd be able to do you know custom unlocks really learn about the Android OS make my own TWRP because there's a very very small community for these phones turns out no not at all I cannot unlock my bootloader and the company that manufactures the phone Alcatel uh, more known in the phone and TV world as TCL will not support the United States models of the phones with bootloader unlocks and will not help you with a bootloader unlock. They haven't even followed the rules that Google has set in place if you have a phone running Android where they've released the source code for the kernel. None of it's been released yet. You have to do it within six, phone, six months of the phone's public debut launch. And this phone launched in April. So it hasn't quite been six months yet, but most companies release it within a month or two of the phone hitting the market. And then that's when TWRP development starts and all that. And then when I said I did my research, I did. I looked up three or four previous phone models to mine. All of them were simple. Fast boot, OEM, unlock. Congratulations, your bootloader is now unlocked and your phone will now be wiped thought it would be that easy. I thought it would. Some OEM functions work with my current phone. Some do not. The one that does not work, that's the most important. There's two of them. Flashing unlock does not work. As well as OEM unlock or OEM get unlock ability. Don't work. None of them work. So I would not be able to flash my firmware through Fastboot. I would not be able to flash TWRP. I might be able to boot TWRP, but it still might even um, deny it. It's been a long time since I've tried to boot a uh, file on a phone with a locked bootloader. I don't think it works. And I basically need to just hope for an exploit, which, you know, I'm going to do streams where I dig through the phone and see if I can find one. I have the TCL 10 Pro. Let me look up this phone for you, because it's actually a really nice phone. <sighs> Let's see, I should have done this first, but 
GSM Arena, here we go. So this is a really nice phone. It came out in 2020, it came out May 19th, 2020, so it, it's almost six months. 128 gigs of storage, Android 10 with a plan to go to 11. Um, it's a great phone. It shouldn't work with Verizon, but so far I've only had one issue. And that was just like the fact it just wouldn't connect. And I have no reason to understand why that was. Um, but it works. It's fine. I just restarted the phone and it was fine. So I think it was just a weird little hiccup. Um, takes nano SIM or hybrid SIM. And you can also do an SD card to even expand the storage size further. Um, it is a 2K resolution, which is nice. HDR10, which is freaking sweet. I'm actually running a different um, density. I'm running 425, which makes the phone look even better. Um, this is pixels per inch, which you can't change that. That's a hardware thing, but visually you can, and it's like changing the resolution on your desktop screen. Battery is huge. Battery sucks. RAM amount, huge, with a Snapdragon 675 awesome it's handled everything i've thrown at it so far uh octa core 2 gigahertz 1.7 gigahertz it's a fantastic phone the camera i have not yet had a chance to really mess with i plan on trying maybe a vlog or something with one of the cars in the backyard maybe the next time i go to a car meet there's one scheduled this month on the 31st um, I tried doing videos on my A10 when I was at that meet this year, or, uh, July 18th, and it just didn't work out. Um, terrible, terrible quality that I would never upload and give you guys. This phone's fantastic. Let's go over my conversation with customer support. I got this phone for 300 bucks. Regularly, it's 450 or 500 so I got a really good deal on this phone. Thank you for contacting Alcatel. We will be happy to help you. In order to better assist you, please provide the following information. Country, state, carrier, model, and IMEI. Obviously, I removed where I live. Granted, most of you know I live in Ohio. It's whatever. Um, my phone is unlocked, not locked in any specific carrier. This is the model. And the IMEI, I removed it. And then I also added on top of that, um, this was before another message that I sent a day later. Since my first message to you, I realized it is a Windows driver issue. Windows recognizes the phone in fast boot D and bootloader mode. I meant to put the D there. Um, fast boot D is a new version of fast boot, so you can't brick your stuff, <laughs> which is really nice. Um, mode as Android, but there's no drivers for it to actually have the computer recognize it. I don't think this is a device itself issue, but TCL hasn't released the drivers for the device to be recognized by a computer yet. Also haven't released the stock firmware files and such to keep me from basically breaking it. Um, me, also me, this is a second email that I sent like a day and a half later because they're very slow to respond. Oh my God. Um, update to this, the computer now sees the device in bootloader slash fast boot mode but no OEM unlock command works. Do you know slash are you allowed to say how to unlock the bootloader for these devices? And then I got my response back that broke my heart from TCL. And this is where this rant started. We are only allowed to help you in the developer mode. We are not able to help enable the bootloader menu. I'm sorry. If there is anything else we can do, please contact us. We will be happy to help you. And then, as you can see, I literally sent the email at this time. I kind of went on my rant. And I'm actually going to say something from the bottom of my rant first before reading this to you guys. Um, because this is a lot of truth and I just feel like it needs to be heard. Um, I know it's not your fault personally as a customer service rep. But sometimes you just got to say what's on your mind. And that's true. Um, it's not something I'm proud of, but I, realistically, I probably still am. It's not a skill you really lose, you just have to be creative. The term social engineering. Social engineering is a tactic of basically talking 
somebody into doing something that they shouldn't do. Social engineering is what was used in the recent Twitter hack where a bunch of super high profile people had a Bitcoin wallet address posted on their Twitters and it said, hey, you send me this much Bitcoin, I'll double it. Social engineering tactics were used for that. I've never gone to that level because that's absurd and terrible, but I experimented with it when I was little. Well, I shouldn't say when I was little. When I was a teenager slash very early 20s. I think I stopped doing it at 23 because um, I, uh, <laughs> I just felt really bad about the customer service reps that I was taking advantage of. Um, so basically, another f form of social engineering is warranty exploitation, something I'm also very good at. I'll read through the warranty of a device, and for some reason I'm very good at finding ways that I can, like, exploit the way the warranty is written, which would make me a great lawyer, by the way. I just suck at college. Why did I start on this rant about social engineering? Oh my god, my brain sucks. ADHD and autism is a bitch. Um, but yeah, so long story short, I used to be very good at it. I probably still am. And why in the f did this topic come up? Oh, I could probably, realistically, I could probably social engineer somebody that's a customer service rep at... TCL to help me learn to unlock the bootloader, but it's not worth it. It's not. So I basically, I don't think that's where I was going with that, but whatever. Uh, so literally the only reason I bought this phone, U.S. model phone model manufacturers really screw the consumers. The international versions of nearly every brand out there are supported for bootloader unlocking, but the U.S. market? Nope. We're forced to either exploit and potentially destroy our devices in the process or live the lockdown life which we are very good at because of covid um <laughs> i returned a samsung a51 unlocked because the u.s model can't be bootloader unlocked but the international versions can be i turned away from motorola for the same reason lg phones don't have much support whether it's a community or the company and I went with TCL because I noticed other models you've released had simple fast boot OEM unlock and boom, it was unlocked. Was hoping it'd be the same. Don't get me started on Apple. They're entirely anti right to repair. I hate Apple. But the way the US phone market is, every single phone on the market is basically an iPhone. Um, now, yes, with the Motorola phones, some can be bootloader unlocked, like I said at the beginning of this video. Some LGs can be. Realistically, I probably should have just looked into like a Xiaomi phone and hoped it worked with Verizon or changed carriers and gotten a GSM-branded carrier. The only phone on Verizon that I know for sure is super simple to unlock and use for development is either A, a OnePlus which was way out of my price range because they only advertised the 7T and up as working for Verizon. But you have to have non-CDMA phone enabled on your account. Or um, they also support uh, the Google Pixel outright. And the Google Pixel actually has less 4G support than even Yumi Digi phones. Yumi Digi phones are these weird Chinese knockoff phones, and I'll show you the one I almost bought. Yumi Digi F2. So I'll show you the one that I almost bought, because this phone is really freaking sweet. And while I'm glad I got the one that I have because of the camera, Yumi Digi phones are just a great bang for the buck. 32 megapixel selfie front camera. This one, the TCL is only a 16. 48 megapixel AI quad camera in the back. It's not 64 like my current phone, but that's fine. 5100 milliamp hour battery. That's ridiculous. That's like a three day battery life right there. Because these phones come with stock Android. They're not filled with bloatware from Verizon or... 
AT&T or T-Mobile or my neighbor laughing at me through the window as I'm talking to myself because he doesn't realize I'm probably recording a video. You guys can't hear him and he's not actually doing that. I'm just putting him on the spot. But one of the issues that I realized with the with this phone is it would be a huge gamble if it works with Verizon or not. Voice over LTE just flat out won't work. Verizon is switching to voice over LTE only, so I need a phone that supports it. And while yes, you can get it working on this phone, it's not easy. You have to do some hacky things that aren't worth the time. Um, and there's some other issues as well with getting it working because the phone has... Granted, one thing I will definitely say is... Yumi Digi phones on Verizon. <laughs> What's really funny about Yumi Digi is compared to a Google Pixel on the 4G spectrum, at least. Feels like I'm talking about autism whenever I say the word spectrum. Uh, where did Verizon go? Right then. Where did Verizon go? It's not even in this list anymore. Oh, there it is. So all of the 4G spectrum is supported on this phone, and the 2G spectrum is supported. The 3G is not. Verizon's dumping the 2G spectrum, period. Not even flip phones will work. Um, 3G should work, and 4G should work everywhere. The only reason I didn't take my chances is because of that voice over LTE. This phone doesn't support that. So let me show you how much this phone costs. The only place I've been able to find this phone for sale is eBay, which gave me trust issues outright. I'll admit it. No, that's the Yumi Digi X. I'm sorry. Hold on. Uh, F1. Actually, can't I just find it here? I can't. Buy now. So, and these are the only places it's sold. It's not even sold in the United States. Let's look at AliExpress. My cat sneezed. Are you done? Anyway, she's done. So, 200 bucks gets you this amazing freaking phone. Amazing phone. I'm not in Canada. Fuck you. I might still buy this once I get my first paycheck. I might still buy this phone to see if it works at all. Um, because it's only 200 bucks. I paid 300 for my phone. I paid 300. Original price tag is 450. The um Let's see, Snapdragon 675 versus, what are you? Uh, shoot, why did it take me to here? Whatever, specifications. Where is the, it's the MediaTek, Helio. P70. So here's versus. MediaTek on the left. Um, Qualcomm 675 on the right. The MediaTek P70 is also a better processor than the phone I bought for $300 for a $200 phone, or less if you can find it used. Everything about this phone is better than the phone I bought, except for its 3G support. And even then, I can switch to any of these carriers. I could switch to Google Project Fi. I was thinking about it anyway. I could switch to Cricket. I could switch to H2O. I could switch to Ting, um, T-Mobile. It would be entirely fine for me to use this phone on any single one of those platforms. And I would have gotten a better deal, better bang for the buck, because this phone is better. I bet you I could even unlock this bootloader. In fact, on their own website for Yumi Digi, they actually have a forum that you can look at. You can go to their community forum, 
Look at this. This is an unreal. The only other company I've ever seen with this, I believe, is OnePlus. You can go to their forum. They have a ROM section. And you can select your phone. Let's say I buy that F2. Where's the F2? F2? F2. Oh, there it is. Yumi Digi F2. Look at this. Their ROMs and stuff are right here. They also support posting custom ROMs on their forum. You can post custom ROMs here. You can go to the sub forums and you can go to miscellaneous development. Um, you can do, there's root things you can do. So root might actually even be directly built into the phone. Um, see, look, you can use root joy and it'll root the phone for you. Uh, RootJoy looks like it's something they support on their own customer's website. There's user development, so you can actually go in and you can even try to select the phone you actually have. So the F2, for example. Oh, apparently there's not any threads for the F2. Um, let's try the Super. As you can see, there's an, they have it directly on their forum right here. There is a Cyanogen Mod 13 for the Yumi Digi Super on their own forum. Let's see. Yumi Digi Super. It's not on their uh, list of phones, so I can't tell how well it's going to work. But as you can see, it's literally on their personal website. OnePlus is the only other company I've ever seen actually host the files on their own website. Here's the Linux kernel source, unofficial firmware. Um, like, there's so much stuff here. It's ridiculous. The touch, um, source code for it, CM13. There's, they support their community in development. None of these other companies do. They only do on the international scale because countries overseas require that by their laws. The United States doesn't have those laws. We've been fighting for right to repair for years, and it just doesn't exist in the United States. It sucks. I hate that we're locked down like this. We're supposed to be, quote-unquote, the freest country on the planet, and yet every instance of our lives is dictated, and the things we buy and own flat out, we aren't even allowed to do what we want with them. I've been saying this for years. And it's 100% the truth. Lewis Rossman love reference, loves referencing an old automotive commercial where it looks like a mother and a daughter repair their own car. They change the brakes themselves using a tutorial from some online website that happened to have pictures and text to guide them through or a video. They fix the car. They are full of excitement for the fact they did it themselves. And then they go and ram it into a brick wall because they did it wrong. No, I'm kidding. And they go off for a test drive, and they're ecstatic. They love the fact that they just completed this ex fairly difficult thing all on their own without a mechanic. Why don't we have that right with our phones? It's not a security issue. If I want to take a security issue into my own hand of rooting my phone and, you know taking a chance at downloading an Android app on the Play Store that steals my contact list. whoop de frickin do Everybody's information's already out there anyway. I guarantee you, your average consumer is not going to care about this. But the fact I want my device to last, I want the device to be repairable both on a software and hardware level, and the fact that I don't want to be lacked locked down and controlled in the way that I use my device it's stupid it really is so I don't know I don't really know how to end this video because <laughs> frankly I'm just mad um it's finally stopped raining so I'm gonna go take my drive to the bank so I can deposit some money and actually pay my mortgage uh maybe I'll stream later maybe I won't I don't know it really all depends on my computer it's not hot today in my house. It's not 90 degrees. I don't need the fan facing my computer the entire stream. So maybe we'll do some Trackmania streaming. I don't know. 
I want to try to get a set schedule. Maybe I'll come home and clean my house so I can actually do face cam. Now that I turned around and looked at my house, my mind has changed. I will stream eventually. Um, <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you guys can agree with me. I know this is a lot longer than usual, and there was a lot of just dragged on talking that probably was pointless, especially the social engineering point. Where was I even going with that? I, sh I feel like I should just go back in the video once I finish recording this, watch that section, and figure out what the f I was talking about. <laughs> yes, I just beat myself. I don't know why I did it. I have so many spare phones. I don't know what I'm going to do with them. If you made it this far into the video, let me know what your favorite food is in the comments down below, because I'm getting really bored of eating spicy chicken pizza and wow, that's really pretty much all I eat and salad and ramen. Let me know your favorite food down in the comments. I might try it as long as it's not shellfish because I'm allergic. So talk to you guys later. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, I hope you guys understand where I'm coming from, and I hope you guys feel the same way. If you don't, give me your argument in the comments if you have any sort of technical background. Um, I'll actually take your comments seriously. If you're just some Joe Schmo who wants to support Trump and be like, oh, uh, it should be locked because it's a security reason, I'm going to tell you to go screw yourself. So I'll talk to you guys later. Peace out.